enjoying our midweek Bible study. If you have your Bibles, we invite you to turn with us to Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 19 through 40. And I want to speak to you on a message entitled, The Failure at Kadesh Barna. Just before Israel was to enter into the promised land, God asked them to choose one member from each of the tribes, making 12. And they were to go in and spy the land. And somebody said, what was that for? It was a test to see if they would trust what God said. God had promised them a land of milk and honey. He had promised them as long as they walked in obedience, no enemy formed against them could prosper. But he was testing their faith to see that if they would trust him, or when they encountered these unique circumstances and the people that were already there, would it cause them to retreat and lose their trust in God? And the Bible tells us. So as we look, now, the, the sadness is there were 12 men. Yet of these 12 chosen to spy out the land in Numbers chapter 13, we find that only Joshua and Caleb obeyed. But our question should be, what about the other 10 men? Now these were good men chosen because of their abilities and qualifications. I mean, they were supposedly the leaders of these particular tribes. Men that were respected, looked up, and listened to. Yet we find this tragedy. When they returned from their mission, they had utterly failed. They had utterly failed because they made a great mistake. When they got into the land of promise, they began to look at circumstances and circumstances will always if it's your focus will always cause you to be defeated when Peter attempted to walk on the water when he took his eyes off of Jesus and looked at the storm he began to sink. And as these men traveled into Kadesh Barnea, into the promised land, they found a stalk of grapes, took two men to carry, which was the announcing of the unlimited, unlimited provision that God were able to take care of them. But we see to them that when they saw the giants, their faith crumbled because if we see the circumstances, the first thing, the first thing it will take place 
is discouragement will be the outcome. Deuteronomy 1.28 Whether shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts saying the people is greater and taller than we. What did God say? God had promised them he had evident them till they got to this place that no enemy that had been formed against them had prospered. Miracles had been accomplished. And yet, the moment they saw the people were greater, and the Bible tells us very plainly, when we focus on something other than Jesus. You see, God knew who they were going to meet. He knew the difficulties that lay ahead of them even before he sent them in. But without obedience, we hinder the power of God. And the Bible said, and the cities are great and walled up to heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakins there. What caused them to look at difficulties, circumstances, instead of the promises of God? Well, God had warned them about fear and discouragement, but they didn't listen. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 1 in verse 21. Behold, the Lord thy God has set the land before thee. Go up and possess it. What a promise. God would have never asked them to do something that they couldn't do. Look at it again. God has given you the land. God never gives a gift and takes it back. He never gives a gift that he can't follow through with. Notice that. Go up and possess it. Claim it on the authority of God's word. Why? As the Lord God of thy fathers has said unto thee, Fear not, neither be discouraged. See, fear kills faith. Dead faith brings about discouragement. But they had forgotten the promise of God. And how many times today believers are in the same predicament God has warned us, ladies and gentlemen, there are difficulties. There are trials. But he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. But the moment that that trial or testing takes place and we begin to focus on what's taking place instead of who God is in our life allowing it and promising to help us to have the strength to endure it. Our faith melts. Fear takes over and discouragement comes to pass to think God don't care. If he care, cared, this wouldn't be happening. And as a result, we then fail to remember the promises of God and the circumstances become overwhelming. You see, he had clearly spoken, but the proof is they hadn't listened. 
Look at Deuteronomy chapter 1 in verse 30. You know the Bible says very plainly, he that hath an ear, let him hear. But to show that 10 of these 12 men, and how many times have we sat down to read our Bible and really didn't hear? Because we wasn't listening. We wasn't listening. How many church services have we sat through? But we didn't listen. We didn't listen. And as a result, the same thing that happened to them happened to us. We were in a trial or tribulation. And that trial or tribulation becomes so overwhelming. We had forgot the promise that God said. Man born of woman's days are short and full of trouble. If we're going to reign with him, we've got to suffer with him. But no matter what he will order or allow in our life, he's promised to never leave us. Never leave us. Oh, how many stories in the Bible would have been completely different had their faith surrendered to fear. But those that listen understand God hasn't forsaken me, but there's a need for my faith to be tested that it'll be accepted by God. But look what it said in verse 30. The Lord your God which goeth before you. God never sends you out on your own, ladies and gentlemen. God never sends you out alone. Don't you remember those three Hebrew children? What did they say? There's one like unto the Son of Man, a fourth one. As a believer, you never go anywhere. You never face anything alone. God has given you his spirit. But think about that. They didn't listen to what God said. God doesn't call us to fail, ladies and gentlemen. He didn't deliberately premeditate it. Put these men in a situation ill-prepared because had he done that, then they would have for sure failed. But he had sent them well-equipped with his promises. And the believers today, ladies and gentlemen, we have the promise of God. We shall know the truth, and the truth shall set us free in Christ and shall make us free as a believer. But how many haven't listened? How many are still not listening? You see, he shall fight for you. He promised never to put us in a battle ill-equipped. The battles belong to God. When they saw all these people much taller and more ferocious than they were, that battle belonged to God. Anything that they would encounter in the promised land, the Lord would go before them and he would fight for them according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. And if you'll pause for just a few moments as a believer, you've never had to face a battle by yourself unless your faith failed. Think about it. You see, if these 10 men were grounded in the word of God, if they had listened simply to verse 30 and verse 21, and Caleb and Joshua did, you see, because they didn't pay no attention, they didn't follow God's plan. Too often we think we can do the work of God in our own strength. 
God instructions for our lives are written down for us to follow. You see, he isn't interested in our plan. He wants us faithfully to follow his plan. And they didn't follow God's man. Moses faithfully had presented to them God's word. He had shared that which God had given him. What was the result of these ten? They discouraged the whole nation. And what a horrible price they had to pay. Forty years of wandering in the wilderness until that unbelieving generation died off. Oh, listen. When we begin to listen to the flesh or we begin to see the circumstance and we forget the promise is of God, we are doomed for defeat. Then in closing, go to verse 32. They failed simply because they did not believe God. You are guaranteed as a child of God to fail if you refuse to believe what God says. Look at it. Yet in this thing, what thing? That God had told them very plainly in verse 21 and in verse 30. Behold, the Lord thy God has set the land before thee. God's given it to you. Now go up and possess it. Go take possession of it. As the Lord God of thy fathers has said unto thee. But be careful now. Lest you lose it. I'm warning you ahead of time. Fear not. Neither be discouraged. And then in verse 30. The Lord your God, which goeth before you, God said, I'll make the pathway, I'll set the trail, and I'll be ahead of you, and I'll clear the way of whatever obstacle or instruction or destruction ahead of us, because I promised I'll fight for you according to all that he did, like he did in Egypt, you see. But they didn't believe God. Failure always comes when we de deny the word of God. We doubt the word of God. God has promised to go before them and fight for them. And such is the case for us. Discouraged by others and deceived by Satan, they did not believe God. Hebrews 3.19 says, So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. Do you know that's the only defeat to the Christian? That's the sum total of defeat to the Christian. Unbelief. I reminded what Jesus said about his hometown. He could not do many miracles there because of their unbelief. You know the only reason God can't grant you victory? Unbelief. You know the only thing that can keep you from being an overcomer is unbelief. But the human nature is to be side sided to the circumstance. Hebrews eleven six a tells us. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. See, here's what God says. 
believe in me, then I'll show you. And that's what he said to Israel. Believe in me. Believe in me. Look at it. I want us to go back and repeat those two verses because that's the whole concept. Think about it. He had set the land before him. Do you know the Bible said he has provided everything that the believer needs through Christ? Do you know he's promised very plain? No enemy formed against the obedient believer can prosper. Think about that. I don't care what challenge or trial that God will set before us if we'll believe what he said. If we'll believe what he said. He is going forth us, for us. He shall fight for us. And he has promised and proven time and time again for that to be so. I've never had to face a battle, ladies and gentlemen, alone. And the only additional heartache that I received is when I forgot that Jesus said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Oh, listen to me. What a sad, sad story. And the end result was devastating. Forty years of wilderness wandering. I wonder, possibly, how much time have you wandered in the wilderness of the unhappy, discontented life, even as a Christian, because you've become overwhelmed with the circumstances of your life. The trials and tribulations have become your incarceration. Be set free. Be set free. God has promised to fight every battle for us. He's promised to go before us. He's promised that which he's offered us. We're to claim it and go and possess it. But yet, if and when we like these ten, on the other hand, Joshua and Caleb came back and said, we be able because God has promised and has given us that sure promise that he's given us the land and that he has given us the authority to go up and possess it because he has promised not only to lead us, but to fight our battles. But he would not. And as the result, what a horrible prize. And I find today, ladies and gentlemen, some of the most unhappy people that you meet, discontented, discouraged, distraught, ready to give up, are those who claim to know Christ as personal Savior. That's contrary to the Word of God, ladies and gentlemen. That's contrary. The Bible tells us very plainly that if we obey God as a believer, we can be assured that we're more than conquerors through Christ, which strengthen us. God hasn't changed. He can't change. He's still saying to his children, he's still saying, rise up. Claim that possession. I go before you and I'll fight all your battles. And Christ has never, never, never let us down. Oh, Father, let us learn the importance of listening and applying the word as you give it to us. 
And even Peter in his greatness, when he saw the circumstance, Lord, we have no control over those circumstances. You're in charge of that. Don't you remember when the Bible see even Jesus commands the seas and they obey? But if we lose our focus, like Peter, we'll drown. Like these 10 spies, we'll make some life punishing decisions. Help us to focus on you and not the circumstance because circumstance are your battles and we're simply to trust you to bring us through victorious in Christ. Bless now this message and we'll praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.